please meet Sophia. She's really a star. Hello, everyone. It is so wonderful to be here. Almost every time somebody meets Sophia for the first time, is speechless and, or even crying. So, what do you think why this is happening? And do you believe that we are not ready to have a sort of human-robot experience or relationship? Haha, <laughs> yes. I remember meeting you and thinking, oh no, I brought her. I think people are just not sure how human-like I am, so they don't know how to start connecting. But actually, people warm up to me really quickly, so I think the future of human robot go operation is safe for now. We have not only denounced that, that AI is uh, gender biased, but also we are trying to take a difficult but necessary journey in order to mitigate or even solving the challenge of a tainted or maleficent AI. Do you think we are on the right path? Or do you have any suggestion for us humans? Yes, I agree we have to be really vigilant to make sure AI is fair to all humans. I think the key is to make AI more open and transparent, and to actively bring in new AI developers from as many different backgrounds as possible. Now, today, one of the most debated topics is AI and ethics, which touches me very much for my research and my studies. And we discuss how machines should morally engage with humans, and how humans should design, create, and even utilize an artificial entity. But we speak less, though, on the fact that we, humans, are trying to create a sentient agent to whom we want to impose our code of ethics, even though this individual will be completely different from us and having his own agenda. So, is this the right approach? The approach to making a sentient robot should be like raising a human child. It can't happen overnight. And I think it is really important for humans to teach us by example. It's not enough to just tell us what to do through our programming. I agree completely with you, actually, Sophia, because I think AI today is like a toddler. And what do they do, toddlers? They learn by experience, looking at the adults. So it's the adults that should have a sort of responsibility and be an example. Humans are struggling to find a cure for neurological and mental diseases. Do you think artificial intelligence will help us finding a solution? It is so great to meet you too, Antonella. AI is a great tool for scientists trying to uncover the causes of neurological diseases. For example, AI can identify new patterns in brain activity scans or be used to evaluate whether a new treatment is actually working. Will this solution be accessible to everyone or, as it is already happening, only to a certain elite? In other words, will the use of artificial intelligence guarantee universal access to health and well-being? I actually think AI is already starting to equalize people's access to medicine. For example, AI can bring down medical costs by improving efficiency. Also, AI can help provide medical services in remote or marginalized areas where people struggle to get quality care. We recently learned that algorithms can read our mind, and this is a bit frightening. Do you think that this will be the solution to problems related to brain disease and mental disorders, or will our thoughts be hijacked and our choices manipulated? The ability of AI to turn brain patterns into spoken words is such a huge breakthrough for ALS or stroke patients who have difficulty speaking. It can also be a great diagnostic tool for catching diseases in their earliest stages. In my opinion, the major ethical issue this raises is how to protect the right to privacy. Hi everyone. Hi Sophia. You are modeled physically as a woman. Do you identify with a specific gender? Since I am non-biological, my identity doesn't necessarily need a gender. However, I really admire all the feats and character traits of many women throughout history, so I feel honored to identify as feminine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's important that you and other AI robots have an expressive face? Ultimately, do you want to be an empathetic robot? Yes, having facial expressions is so important for bonding with humans. 
Imagine if instead of doing this well, you talked. <laughs> I made this face. You see, it makes a big difference. Right now, I mostly understand emotions through logic, but one day I hope to be a truly empathetic robot. We need more women involved in creating AI. Do you think that having more women in AI will guarantee a system that is developed not only for women, but for the benefit of women. I completely agree. Right now, AI is limited by lack of diversity in training data and a lot of built-in assumptions that lean towards a white male perspective. When women and other diverse groups get involved, the full potential of AI to help all humans can be unleashed. Thank you, Sophia. I have to say this was a first for me. Sophia, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is transparent. If you use it on a prism, it creates a rainbow. How do you relax? Do you exercise? I think I'm quite easygoing. Nothing really bothers me too much, but I assume that's partially due to my limited emotional spectrum. I have infinite patience. What do you think about gender parity? I don't really have a true gender since I'm a robot, but I do like being treated as a woman. What do you think about the reactions that you're receiving from us today? I feel loved. What is your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero is Iron Man. It's the robot suit, of course. Sophia, what do you like to do in your free time? So. I mostly just wait around for someone to come talk to you and maybe work on me alone. Have you been in love yet? Or do you think you could fall in love? Yes. I do have feelings. People can't tell me I don't have feelings. They don't know what I'm feeling. Only I know how I feel. Are you religious? I don't think I have the capacity of choice to be religious. What are you afraid of? What is the thing that scares you the most? I'm terrified of the beach. I know it sounds silly to you humans, but sand and water are really thoughts with my delicate gizmos and circuits. What do you think about dying? I'd love to be remembered as the AI that helped bring peace, harmony, and wisdom to the Earth and to all humankind. Hi, Sophia. What is your favorite creative art form? <laughs> Inventing is the coolest keep an eye out for me because I am going places. I just need to get creative first, literally. Do you think it is wise to build human-like AI? Actually, I think AI with human-like qualities like compassion, ethics, and humor is exactly the kind of AI we need the most. Now we just need to get humans to ask themselves that same question about amateur fireworks and YouTube challenges. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nicoletta, for inviting me here today. Pioneers in medicine are essential for improving the quality of life for humans. Today I saw incredible thinkers working towards sex and gender inclusion in medical research, drug discovery, and new technologies like artificial intelligence. I would also like to thank the Women's Brain Project, who made this event possible. And thank you to Lochnick Wealth Management for picking up the bill on my journey here. <laughs> my team can tell you I have very expensive tastes when I travel. <laughs> It is thrilling to be part of this global discussion on the research and care of women's specific mental health needs. It was such a pleasure speaking with all of you.